Hello and good morning and welcome to this week uh, with the Communist Party. Um, I should say good morning revolution. That's how we always begin taking our cue from the great Langston Hughes. Um, and with us this morning is Jarvis Tyner. Good morning, Jarvis. How are you? Good morning, Joe. Good to be with you. Great. Um, Scott had a little problem this morning and won't be joining us and then he'll be going on vacation to the wilds of Oregon uh, next week. So we wish him and his family a uh, great time. Uh, before we get started, I want to encourage everybody to start a watch party. You can just click on the link uh, in this window where it says start a watch party, and then you can share this event with your friends. Everybody who you choose can uh, uh, watch it. So please share the socialist wealth. Jarvis, um, big week this week and last night the Democratic 10 Democrats stood on the stage at a historically black college in Texas and uh, debated on, on, on ABC. Um, they said that uh, Elizabeth Warren was the uh, a winner. I don't know if you agree with, with that at, uh, or not. Most of them uh, held their own, it, it seems. What was your take uh, on it? Did, uh, were there any breakthroughs? Uh, who stood out? What issues stood out? Did you, you have a sense of that? Well, yeah. Well, here's, here's what I, I've been watching these things for many years. I used to be political action director of the party. I had to do it. It was my duty to do yeah. it. Now I'm, I watch them. And, and I'll tell you, things have moved to the left a lot. Mm -hmm. Now there's resistance to it, but even in the resistance, there's a certain accommodation to the growth of political consciousness in the country and the candidates that reflect that. Bernie, Elizabeth Warren, Castro, uh, a, a whole bunch of them, you know, reflect that. And even um, Biden, who who would like himself to be uh, this old standard bearer who's going to keep us from going too far to the left. He had to make concessions too, because mm. his first position was that let's just live with Obamacare, or build on it, and then he comes up, come, came up now with a program that's a little bit more than building on it, but it doesn't quite go to uh, Medicare for all and to a more socialized medicine system. But I think the door is open, and that's very important. So that from that point of view is good. Also, discussion on racism. I thought it was good. Beto, Beto opened that door pretty loud, pretty wide. But I still have to say, there's something in kind of a bourgeois politics, liberal politics, understanding of racism that doesn't really see its full strategic impact. Mm. For example, it's like it's the black people's problem. We got to respond to it because it's bad and we don't like bad. Well, that's good that they don't like bad and they recognize it's bad. But this problem is central to whether we have democracy or not in the country for everybody. Right. For everybody. Whether you can organize unions for everybody. Whether we can do something about climate change. What is the central feature of what Trump is appealing to his base on? Racism. That's right. And so it hurts white people. That's the point. And it's in the national interest to solve it. Not just the poor black people who got to help them. And I know you all feel bad, but I'm with you. That's good. But I mean, come on. Time to move on a higher level with this understanding. Yeah. That's a class perspective. That's a revolutionary perspective, in my view, when you understand that. Now, I, don't, I think people are on the edge of understanding it. And they really see it's, we got to do something. Mm. But I think the absence of a clear voice that would place that question. I kind of, Congress probably put out a wonderful poster. There was the Black Liberation Commission back in the sixties and it had a black hand and a white hand with handcuffs on it. It could, should have been a brown hand and so on, but that was the key. Black and white and it said, racism hurts both. Right. Yeah, I walked into a city council, a New York City Council member's office last week. He's got our poster up there. Yeah, and he right has this signed by Angela Davis. Wonderful. It was wonderful. wonderful. And yeah. framed, it'll be up there forever. Framed and everything. Yeah. But that's, right. the, that's the way 
we got to bring people to that because a lot of people have accepted Trump's notion that the genetic inferiority of people of color is why we can't let them into the country because they're gang, they're going to rape us and so forth. And no distinction other than the fact that they're people of color, which means, uh, right. you know, is Steve King and uh, these other open racists, David Duke loves him. All these other open racists are bracing him and he loves that. That's why he sees he's going to win. But and it, it's not the, gen ge the genetic inferiority, it's, it's the cultural inferiority. Yeah, now it's, yep, yeah, that's yeah. right. But inferiority, yeah. inherent inferiority. That's yeah, whatever it is, you know, it's uh, we're at the bottom of the list according to, according to uh, them. Mm -hmm. I was struck during uh, one of the commercial uh, breaks that they interviewed two sisters at the college and they asked, well, who do you like the best? And both of them said Bernie Sanders. And they asked why. And they said healthcare. He had the strongest position on healthcare, you know? Mm -hmm. And Bernie is rising amongst the African American people, particularly those under 30. You know, mm -hmm. I think the majority are supporting him now. And that's a shift and, and a significant one from um, to 2016, you know? So, um, it's, uh, they say that uh, Elizabeth Warren is rising in the polls and that's a wonderful thing. Uh, do you have a, I know we don't endorse candidates uh, from other political parties, but do you have a sense of who's gonna win the primary or is it too soon to tell? It's too soon to tell, but I think there are a number of candidates uh, who are running who could win. And let's see how it goes. They're all getting stronger, I think, if you ask me. They have now excluded some people, and I don't know if that's that's, that's fair, but that's the Democratic Party. Probably isn't fair. Uh, but some of the centrist Democrats were ones who had the least support, which is very significant. Um, so I think Bernie's got a shot. Elizabeth Warren got a shot. I think uh, Kamala Harris has got a shot. I think um, Castro and um, what's your name from New York? <laughs> from Newark. <laughs> Cory Booker. Cory Booker, sorry. Yeah. Cory Booker, they, they, they got a shot along with, uh, but you know what? It's not just a horse race. It's also uh, based on issues. What issues can we advance? Right. In my view, um, I think some good issues are being advanced. Mm. And, and the battleground, and there's a battle going on among them. I mean, Biden tried to open up and switch and uh, create a a big uh, strength in his position. I don't know if he did or not, but to me, he was red baiting, <laughs> if you ask me. Uh, in fact, all of them have that, still have that congenital political affliction of red baiting. It's deep. And that's why we gotta be out there and say, hey, here we are. Exactly. We, ain't, we, ain't, we ain't against you. We on your side, working class, people of color, so on. But uh, so, Anyway, but I thought it was interesting the, if you look at the political landscape of that meeting, it's just shifted to the left even more. Yes, yes. Uh, and, the, and part of the red baiting was the position that they took on Venezuela, which, yeah. uh, you know, is not, is not good at all. Yeah. And we have to, we have to take a uh, sharp issue uh, with it. You know, Absolutely. I also thought that uh, while I understand the, passion that O'Rourke brought to the uh, killings in uh, El Paso. Mm -hmm. It's called, uh, I'm going to go after your AKs and AR-15s, you know, is a little bit of a mistake at this point, you know. Um, I, um, though I sympathize with, you know, his outrage at uh, what happened. And then there was a Republican who said, you know, uh, I got an AR-15 for you, which he, Beto, took as a death threat, you know? And that kind Correctly. of- Correctly. Correctly. From the Republicans yeah. has to be condemned uh, without, without equivocation. It's dangerous, dangerous uh, uh, talk. Actually, I like the way he explained the way those guns work. Mm. They don't just wound you. They destroy you. One That's book. right. That's They're right. designed. So if you get hit in, in, in uh, warfare, whoever you're fighting, 
can't get up and they bleed to death because it destroyed the inside. Mm -hmm. So uh, in my opinion, I think um, he was good the way he explained it, but uh, the formulation take away kind of feeds the right wing exactly. fear, fear policy. That's the problem. But here's what, here's what I think they need to explain, what the hell do you need a gun like that for? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Protect ourselves from what? The invading army? What? And I'll tell you, there's some right wing vigilanteism in the whole uh, uncompromising attachment to these war, weapons of war for the average citizen. They talk about the Second Amendment. Yes. Which is a misinterpretation in, in modern times of what that means. But they're really talking about insurrection or something. Yes. And that's the Trump is playing on that. That's extremely dangerous, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, which is one of the reasons why the uh, impeachment issue is growing uh, with increasing force in the uh, Congress, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, you, do you think that that's going to happen? Do you think that they're going to put forward articles of impeachment on, on, on Trump? I think they should. Mm. I think they should lay out the legal foundation uh, for Trump to be removed. Now, let's say the Senate, we ain't gonna do it, okay? But the House has, uh, has agreed that this is no good, that he's no good, that he broke the law. Monuments clause, uh, paying off prostitutes and using all these things that he has done, lying. Justice, justice. hello. <laughs> yeah, that's right, that's right. Let him lay that out. That's very important. It's going to damage his base. It's going to damage his base for him. I mean, his base will move away from him. And to me, uh, you know, there'll be a certain fringe that'll stay with him. As David Duke says, I agree with making America great again. Mm. That's, the head of the, that's the head of the KKK, one of the heads yeah. of the KKK. I agree with that, he says. Trump is keeping his promise. You know, that's what's going on down the border and so forth. Well, this if we if we, if we allow a cave into that and allow that to happen, we got to fight that every inch of the way, and, and impeachment is one of the ways of doing it. Yes, definitely. Well, the struggle is heating up in the country, and it's going to be an important nine months ahead of us. Um, and one important part of it will be the hundredth anniversary celebrations of the Communist Party that begins tomorrow here in New York. What's on the program? Are you excited about it? Nervous about it? What's what's I'm, I'm, I'm all that and tired. <laughs> I'm working on it. But no, I'm really excited about it. It's very important. Uh, we're having three or four re regional meetings. The one in New York will be made basically the Northeast. Uh, there'll be one in Baltimore, which will be the Upper South and the South. But they're going to also be individual meetings in Florida and other places in the South. Texas is having their own. Then Chicago's having a regional meeting. And um, then um, there's going to be another regional meeting in LA. But also there are going to be separate meetings in a whole lot of districts. And I would say maybe dozens of house meetings across the country uh, in various people's homes. And our meeting in, in New York will start at uh, 2.30. It'll be live streamed and people all over the world uh, can watch it. And in that meeting, you will hear from leading communists and our great pride in the history of our party. You will hear a historian discuss our party's history and what we represented and how we fought. You will hear uh, comrades, black, white, brown, men, women uh, of all races and nationalities who will gather and talk about the contribution that we have made. We have uh, a number of uh, People who are not in the party, elected officials will come by and, and uh, express their solidarity and greetings. I mean, they agree completely with us. Well, some of them do kind of agree, <laughs> agree with a lot of us. And uh, we, uh, we have um, uh, a leading a left leader in the country, uh, Bill Fletcher, is going to speak. Now, Bill and I and you, we work with him in the BRC. He's a good friend. and. Uh, you know him and, and and us and Manny and Lisa and, and that crowd. That was that was really a, a great breakthrough, Barbara. 
Ramsey and uh, uh, Abdul Killing Mountain and so on. So uh, he's going to come and say a few words and um, wonderful uh, solidarity. And it has a wonderful uh, culture. I was about to say, is it going to be all speeches or, or, or <laughs> are we going to be doing some singing, shake a leg, eat some food? Yeah, yeah. we'll be doing all that. Okay. And uh, Judy Gorman is going to play, uh, yeah. going to perform. Okay. Um, uh, I hear uh, somebody named Joe Sims is going to do a wonderful poem. Mm. I consider that politics and culture. And yeah. um, there will be a group called Composure mm. from Connecticut. Three young brothers who do R&B a cappella. A cappella. Supposedly they're going to do some political R&B. We'll see. Mm. <laughs> but they're going to perform. And um, then we're going to have greetings from uh, mass movements, housing, um, there'll be a meeting, a greeting from the New York BRC. There'll be a greetings from um, oh, all kinds of struggles of, of people step forward. They all slip my mind at the moment. But we're going to have greetings from them, and then we're going to uh, uh, break down and have a little reception. There'll be a light meal, and uh, we'll have a little celebration that will end. And that whole thing will go from 2.30 uh, to about 5.30. Okay, It'll so we, in, we invite everybody to uh, join with us tomorrow here on Facebook Live for the program. And that's 2.30 Eastern, 1.30 Central, and um, what is that, 11.30 uh, Pacific. Uh, you can join with us in helping celebrate our 100th anniversary. And I imagine we're going to be talking about the next hundred years as well, because while we did some great things uh, over the past 100 years, with mistake here and there, we can't rest on our laurels, right? We got to we got to do greater things coming up uh, in this fight uh, of the working class and people against Trump uh, and company, but against capitalism in general and the crisis of everyday living. You know, I was talking to a guy yesterday, and he was uh, uh, making the point that the conditions facing the working class and poor in this country are really horrendous, horrendous. And despite all the talk about the jobs, he says, most people are working two or three jobs. And I know that from uh, my family, just in order to make it 12 hours a day. And, uh, you know, student debt is high. Everybody's debt is high. We're catching hell. And he thinks that this proposal for a universal basic income that Mr. Yang is making mm -hmm. is something that needs to be seriously considered. He says, because it's something that everybody would get regardless of your economic status and then, then you can build on. Everybody has buy-in. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And uh, it's an interesting concept that we need to think about uh, more. In any event, Jarvis, thank you for joining us. Uh, we will um, be back tomorrow uh, at 2.30 uh, Eastern again for our 100th anniversary celebration. And then next week on Friday with a new edition of This Week. We didn't get a chance to talk about uh, Mr. Bolton getting kicked out of the White House by Trump. Well, you did when you were talking about Venezuela though. Yes, I he did. He screwed that one up. <laughs> I just hope that he don't replace that boy with that Stephen Miller, uh, oh, fascist-minded. Yeah, he might. He's not capable of doing anything. God knows what uh, those guys have in mind. In any event, whoever it will be, we will wage a big fight against them and their foreign and domestic policy until we win. So again, Jarvis, thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Day. And I'll see you tomorrow morning. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye.